Well, hi folks, and welcome to this week's episode of The Artist Heart. This week we are in Glen Lyon for some amazing sights, sounds and landscapes on this often hidden treasure of Scotland. We'll also be explaining about the ancient language of Gaelic, where it came from, and even what it sounds like. And I'll be sharing with you a painting that has been inspired during our travels, The Wonderful Stallion in the Shadows. That and so much more on today's episode of The Artist Hub. exciting tutorial is an excerpt from my Stallion in the Shadows art course, which of course is available at OutreachArt.org. Even though we're moving home this weekend, I wanted to make sure that you guys didn't miss out. Hoping you enjoyed today's show. Start here, just adding on some more of the hair. Right, I think what I want to do is to add a little bit more shadow and shading into this nose. Make that a little bit darker. And this painting, I believe, actually has already um, sold. And it's the same lady who has purchased uh, the other white stallion painting. Um, a lady from Carlisle, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, and it's, she is just a wonderful, wonderful lady, and I do thank her so much for her support. Um, So my dad and I would frequently go um, fishing for, for trout, for salmon, and it was just really nice having the day go with my dad and um, just enjoying being with him. It wasn't something we got to do a whole lot. We used to do a lot of rock tossing as a kid, and it's always good fun when you get some big boulders like this. Just launch them in and hear the smack of the waves, hear the smack of the water. Like that. Okay, so while Katie and I are clowning around a little bit, how about we hand you over to our good friends at Visit Scotland Welcome to tell you a little bit more about it's the ancient language they call the map Gaelic. proudly boasts ancient myths and legends entwined into vibrant modern culture. Part of this, and unbeknownst to most, Scotland's most commonly spoken language wasn't always English. 
In fact, Scotland has had various languages throughout the ages, one of which is Gaelic, that you can still hear, read and experience across the country today. Whilst you're in Scotland, it's hard not to notice Gaelic woven into everyday life around you and the culture that stems from it. The Gaelic language is as beautiful as it is interesting. There are thousands of Scottish place names that carry origins from the Gaelic language. Dundee in the east of Scotland, for example, takes its name from the Gaelic Dungee, meaning Tay Fort. And as the city sits on the banks of the River Tay, it's a very fitting name. Similarly, on the shores of Loch Leven in the Highlands, the village of Balachulish in Gaelic is Bala Achulish, which translates as the village by the Narrows. And geographically speaking, this describes the location of Balachulish perfectly. In fact, this whole area has place names and locations that describe its scenery and ancient legends. Scottish Gaelic is closely linked with other Celtic languages, including Welsh, Cornish, Breton, Irish Gaelic and Manx Gaelic. The language dates back centuries and came across the water from Ireland in roughly the 6th century AD. It spread across Scotland and became the mother tongue of the medieval kingdom of Awapa. Over time, cultural, religious and population changes began to influence which languages were spoken. The building of abbeys in the borders and east coast and later the growth of industry in many lowland towns and villages meant other languages like Scots and English became more dominant. By the late 19th century, English was established and spoken as the main language in the schools, churches and communities of Scotland. Policy and legislation played a big part in this shift. For example, the Education Act of 1872 made English the sole language of schools, resulting in large numbers of children required to attend school in English despite mm -hmm. only speaking Gaelic. This ultimately led to the Gaelic language primarily being used in households and in the northern communities of Scotland, such as the Outer Hebrides, the Isle of Skye and the Highlands. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the Highland clearances also played a part in the oppression of Gaelic, but not as much as you might think. When people in Highland communities were being forced off their land by famine, landlordism and economic decline, many Scots emigrated overseas, taking with them the Gaelic language and culture. This explains why you can see remnants of the language in these countries, such as Dunedin in New Zealand, Banff in Canada and Albany in the USA. As much as the language travelled, so did its culture and traditions. Gaelic culture covers a range of fascinating things, such as tartan, a kilt, toe-tapping Kayleys, reverberating bagpipe tunes, hand-woven Harris tweed and much more, all of which you can still experience and enjoy today. Despite many challenges over time, Gaelic and its spirited, unique culture has survived against great odds and is still very much a part of Scotland. When you're in Scotland, you can soak up the welcoming atmosphere, history and customs of Gaelic music and song at one of our traditional music festivals, such as the Hebridean Celtic Music Festival, Harris Arts Festival, Barra Live or Celtic Connections, to name a few. A particularly popular event, the Royal National Mod, prides itself in promoting the teaching and learning of the Gaelic language. It boasts incredible performances from bands, singers, musicians and more, all in Gaelic, of course. You may have already heard Gaelic without realising. One blockbuster to grace our screens is Outlaw King, starring Chris Pine, which features traditional Gaelic music and songs that can be heard throughout the film. The popular TV show Outlander uses Gaelic words and phrases throughout the seasons, as well as the characters sporting tartan clothes, kilts, traditional designs and more. The video game Bard's Tale 4 Barrows Deep draws on ancient Scotland to create a mythical world using Gaelic songs across the game. When you're in Scotland, you can watch and hear programmes in Gaelic across TV, radio and online.
Gaelic is a truly beautiful language, so why not learn a few words and phrases and try communicating with the locals whilst you're in Scotland? You may not even realise it, but you already do speak some Gaelic. Whisky is short for Whisky Bay from Uskipehe, meaning the water of life. Other examples of Gaelic words that have found their way into English language are Loch, Glen and Cayley. Why not charm local native speakers by learning some useful Gaelic phrases or have a go at exchanging a few pleasantries? Matin va, good morning. Feskirma, good afternoon. Kimina hashiv, how are you? Hagma tafalev, I'm well, thank you. Mershin leave, goodbye. Wherever you go in Scotland, you can always experience the beauty of Gaelic. Whether you're learning a phrase or two, or tapping your toes to traditional tunes, there are plenty of ways to immerse yourself in the language and its culture. So there you go folks, you now know a little bit more about the Scottish language. Really hope you enjoyed that little snippet during our show. Let's return back now and speed things up a little bit, and let me entertain you now with one of my favourite little songs. Hoping you enjoy. It's a cold, cold evening With a moonlit sky And we're here by the campfire Tonight Piling logs on the fire And the embers rise With the stars glistening in my eyes Here we are together Sharing tales from our lives Watching the flames Flicker brings tears to my eyes. And there are some conversations that. Well, folks, just before we wrap up, it would be remiss of me if I didn't tell you something about the wonder that is Glen Lyon. So let's hand it over now to our wonderful friends. From Discover the road Scotland. drops down past Garth Castle, once the stronghold of the Wolf of Badnoch, Alexander Stuart, who is said to have died here in 1396. Garth Castle is a stark tower house, now under private American ownership. It is said the wolf often threw prisoners from the roof down to the tumbling burn below. Fortingal is said to be the birthplace of Pontius Pilate, whose father was a Roman ambassador sent by Emperor Augustus to hold talks with the Scottish King Mercellanus, and his mother, reputedly a McLaren from Balquidder Glen in the Trossachs. The village stands at the mouth of Glen Lyon. Its cottages, church and hotel were built in the late 1800s by Sir Donald Curry, a wealthy ship owner who lived at Glen Lyon House at the west end of the village. The Fortingal Hotel was built in 1891 to a McLaren design. Opposite the hotel is the Cairn of the Dead. A stone pillar marks the burial ground of victims of the plague in the 7th and 14th centuries. Next door to the hotel is the churchyard, which boasts the oldest living thing in Europe, a giant yew tree said to be anything from three to 5,000 years old. In ancient times, its wood was used for making arrows, and later, fires were lit at its base by youths celebrating the pagan ritual of Beltane, which gradually split the tree. In 1769, the tree was measured at a girth of 56 feet, and it was possible to drive a coach and horses through it. Travel west through Glen Lyon, the Glen of the Crooked Stones, a name derived from ancient circular stone towers associated with the legend of Fingal. It's the longest glen in Scotland, at over 30 miles, and the loveliest and most legend-filled. 
One mile up the glen is MacGregor's Leap, where in 1565 a pursued MacGregor chief leapt to safety when hunted by Campbells with imported mastiffs from Italy. A little further up the glen stands the private Megarney Castle, a 16th century stronghold in a spectacular mountainous setting. Once the home of Robert Campbell, infamous leader of the Glencoe Massacre, his forefather, Mad Colin Campbell, also had his base here. He hanged reavers outside his front door and abducted the Countess of Errol. The castle is said to be haunted by the top half of a Mingus Laird's wife, murdered in the 17th century. Indeed, in 1885, during alterations, the upper part of a skeleton was found beneath the floor. Just as you leave the policies of Megarney, a road forks up to the right to Loch's estate. Here you will often see red deer in amongst the Scots pine, which remains unfenced and therefore a popular shelter for these often elusive creatures. Returning to Bridge of Balgi, the road ahead continues on to Loch Lyon through some wonderful wild open country, but is a private road beyond the loch. Head up over the mountain pass to Ben Lors, Perthshire's highest mountain, at nearly 4,000 feet, has great views from the Atlantic to the North Sea. The southern slopes of the mountain are noted for their wide variety of alpine flowers. Well guys, that's going to do it for this episode of The Artist Heart. I hope you've really enjoyed seeing Glen Lyon all sorts of other things. Don't forget to check out our work and our latest ventures and tours at johnmorrisartfromtheheart.com Keep in touch with me on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, and on Instagram. There's plenty of ways to keep in touch. Guys, until next time, stay safe, be patient with one another, and have a wonderful, wonderful week, guys. Until next time, take care, and God bless.